welcome to Laguna Escosa National Wildlife Refuge. This is the Laguna Madre, which is where we're going to be paddling. And what we're paddling today are um, sit-on-top kayaks, what are referred to as sit-on-top kayaks. And the difference between a kayak and a canoe is that a kayak has a keel, which for our purposes today is really important because um, like a canoe has a flat bottom. So when the wind is blowing, you don't have as much control as you would with a boat that's got a keel. The keel lets you crack, and that's really important um, for our purposes today. So, um, this is a single person kayak, and this is where you would sit, and you put your, put your back seat up that way. Seats are very important, especially for those of you who might have lower back problems. And you can adjust the seat here. And um, I personally, you'll see me sitting straight up, um, because as my friends are giggling, um, it really is, it really is important to, to make sure that your back is well supported when you're out there, because if you're slouching, if you're doing this, you're doing something wrong. Okay. So, and this is the paddle, and it comes in two pieces, and this is where you connect it. You can do it two ways. This is called a non-feathered paddle, or you can adjust it, and this is called a feathered. A feathered is great when the wind is blowing, because that's that much less resistance. When you're pushing your um, paddle up into the air, it's slicing through, and so you don't get, and I got it feathered, feathered backwards, but, so you're not getting the resistance on your paddle. Um, it's also a little bit tricky because your paddle is your tool. This is what keeps you upright. This is what's going to keep you stable. And so if you have it, uh, a, a feathered paddle and you go to put it in the water, you might slice through the water. So I would recommend you start off with a, uh, a non-feathered paddle, which is like this, and you connect them. And I'm not going to do that just yet. These things right here, everyone thinks it's for hand placement, but it's not. It's a drip ring. Um, again, for our purposes, it doesn't really matter, but if, say, you decide to go kayaking in Alaska, it's critical to know this is a drip ring because when your paddle goes up and that water comes down, it catches and drops. It doesn't get on your sleeve. Warm water, not a big deal. Cold water, you'll care. So, a basic stroke. Um, kayaking is a punching motion. You're punching the paddle. It's 90% punch, 10% pull. And if you don't get it right off the bat, you will eventually, because your body won't let you do it. You can't pull all day long. And a basic stroke, you're punching just right about where your chest is. Um, so a basic stroke, you're just punching like this. You're going to get two-thirds of your power in that very first stroke. So if you're doing this, you're not getting very much power. But if you're doing this, you're getting a lot more power. Um, it becomes rhythmic when you're out there you'll find yourself just doing this. I just do, I do a figure eight myself, but different people, it becomes a rhythm for you after you get over those sore arms. So, <laughs> but um, a really powerful stroke is to dig deep like this. If your hand is way up over your head, you're doing a really powerful stroke. You're also doing a stroke that leaves you very vulnerable. Because if I'm doing this and I get hit by a wave over here, I got nothing. But if I'm doing this, and I get hit by a wave, I can lean into it. This paddle blade is really, it offers you a lot of support. Um, you can literally, not me, but kayakers, uh, you can literally go all the way down the water. I've seen, you know, you, river kayakers go down and touch their ear in the water just using a paddle blade. So it gives you a lot of support and a lot. What you're gonna find out here, what's gonna be your, your biggest problem out here are these boats. People are gonna be zipping past you and it's gonna create a wake and everybody inevitably it goes, uh oh, and they take the one thing that supports them the most out of the water. It's instinctual. You're going to do it, and that's the worst thing you can do. Not only do you have that much more weight higher up, but you've taken the one thing that connects you to the water out. If your paddle blades up, you got one point of contact with the water. If your paddle blades in the water, you got two. You got the blade and your boat. And again, you can just lean into it. You'd be really surprised. Into the way. You can, um, onto your paddle blade. Okay. So just when you're out there, just watch to see where your paddle blade is. You know, watch to see how you put it in just those first few times for those of you who've never paddled. Because, um, you know, sometimes it takes you a minute to get a feel for it. And so just watch your blade go in. And, um, and whenever you see a boat coming, if it makes you nervous, just trail your, trail your uh, blade in the water and just keep it flat on the surface. Um, a double kayak. I think I was telling someone earlier. Man, we, you, you can have a loving relationship for decades, and we put you in a double kayak or a double canoe, 
break up in three minutes. It will drive you crazy. So, for the record, right here, right now, the person in the back steers. If you were in the front, you have nothing, you have no control over where the boat goes. Do not try to steer the boat from the front. The person in the back is steering. The person in the front, you're just a workhorse. That's all you do. But you set the pace. And don't be doing this. Don't be, you know, going fast and going slow. Pick your pace, and the person behind you follows you. And if you want to go in a different direction, tell the person, I want to go in a different direction. Don't do this passive aggressive thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you paddle twice on the same side, you're up to no good. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, just, just paddle and tell the person where you want to go. The person in the back has all the control, so there should be no fights, no arguments <laughs> between you people and devils. Um, again, the biggest problems you're going to face out here are boats coming by that are going to create a wake. Again, just drop your paddle in the water. If you get yourself into trouble, um, one of the things that I use is um, I take it from, I don't know if you've ever scuba divers, but if for some reason you're way out there, and you get yourself into trouble, wave like this. That's the international sign for I'm in distress. Yeah, if you don't have your paddle, which if you're in trouble, it's, it stands to reason that you may not have your paddle. So if you wave like this, and I go, are you okay? And you say this, then I assume you're in trouble and someone's coming to get you. But if you're okay, if you're just waving like, hey, there's something over here, and, and I do, are you okay, then just, yes, I'm okay. Everything's all right. So, um, if you capsize, stand up and walk back to shore, realistically. <laughs> if you cannot walk back to shore, stay with your boat. This is the single best flotation you've got. And it's a great visual. You can see a boat in the water. You can't see a bobbing head. So, stay with your boat. Um, if... If, if something really crazy happens and we all get separated, stay with your boat, get it to shore, and wherever you land on shore, stay there. Don't try to come find us. Don't, you know, obviously something went wrong. We know it. We know who's here. We'll come looking for you. And again, it's easier for us to see a big orange boat sitting on the shoreline than it is to look for two people. So bottom line, stay with your boat.